So I got a real interesting fig for you guys today. Something that we're gonna try that I've yet to, uh, yet to ripen here. It's the first one off of my tree. And uh, a lot of hype, a lot of talk. Well, not really hype, but just talk has been about this fig. Uh, just stating that it's a very early Adriatic type. It's called Green Michurinska. And it comes from a collector in Bulgaria. Um, in those areas of Bulgaria and that, that more Eastern European area, it can be quite a bit colder uh, than Western Euro Europe or even Southern Europe. So um, <clears throat> definitely this variety coming from um, Bulgaria, it's actually got some pretty good hardiness there. Um, so this is relatively a hardy fig. It produces, I think, even Breba. Uh, it produces a main crop that is quite early. And the collector there in Bulgaria just has a huge tree in the ground. And it's quite impressive, actually. It's quite an impressive variety that I think is worth talking about. Um, now, since it's been brought into the United States, a, um, another collector has actually been able to ripen a number of these and claims that it is uh, an early Adriatic. And an Adriatic, I guess we could just define in many ways, really, but <clears throat> my definition is sim simply a fig that tastes and looks like uh, green Aishia, which is uh, a, a synonym of Adriatic. Adriatic was the old, one of the very oldest uh, commercial figs that was grown in California. I think actually in the Fresno area and that was the most popular commercial fig for a while. And uh, it's a great fig. It tastes really, really good. Again, it tastes like strawberries. So that's really the flavors that I should be picking up in this, is a distinct strawberry flavor. And the reason why this could be so special is that if it is indeed an early Adriatic, an early green Aishia, that really means quite a bit because green Aishia and all those different types like J.H. Adriatic and, um, you know, Strawberry Verte, even White Madeira number one, you can maybe classify as this, maybe even Blanche de Du Cezanne. I mean, there's a number of them that are a little bit different. They're not all the same, obviously. There's also Battaglia Green, and uh, uh, there's just so many of them now at this point that have a similar shape. You know, it should be more of a kind of a, a flatter shape, Eurisolato shape. A little bit pyriform, maybe in between a pyriform shape and uh, urusolato. And if this were be true, like I said, it would just really mean a lot because then this for a lot of us in the shorter season climates like I'm in would be the king um, because it is going to ripen significantly earlier than, let's say, strawberry or strawberry verte or JH Adriatic or any of those figs. So again, this would just be a huge leg up and it does seem to be relatively early because it is ripening relatively at the same time as my LDA which is right next to it as the Azores Dark which is right next to that and the LSU Champagne which is right next to that so I could attest that this is going to be maybe not the earliest fig but among the earliest varieties probably two weeks after Ronde Bordeaux or maybe a, a week or two after Ronde Bordeaux um, yeah, so let's, I'm, I'm really curious to just see what the, what the heck the inside looks like on this fig. Let's cut it open. It does seem ripe. It does look like an Adriatic to me. Huh. Very nice, actually. Beautiful, beautiful fig. It does have some cracking on the side. Some large cracking, which is not good. I think you guys can see that pretty darn well. Um, the outside, as I said, is really quite green and yellow and got those sugar spots that you'll normally find on a green Aishia here. And that'll give you, I guess, a decent idea of the shape. Uh, the pulp looks beautiful. It really does look a lot like a green Aishia, J.H. Adriatic. Um, I can certainly attest to that. I actually have a J.H. Adriatic in the ground over there. We have some strawberry verte in pots. Um, 
I have a couple white Madeiras in the ground. Uh, I think one, one in a pot, one in the ground. Um, I have a Blanche de Duce Zahn in the ground. So at some point next year, I think we'll get a good idea of where they all ripen in what order and whatnot. I don't think actually this year, this fig is any much further ahead of the others really. Um, so this is only one year of data, but just judging off of what it did this year, it's really ripening probably 80 to 90 days after pinching. And you could make an argument that, uh, you know, maybe something like JH Adriatic would ripen about 90 days after pinching. So, you know, 10 days difference, I don't think is the biggest difference in the world. And at that point for me, really the biggest concern would be about the split resistance and the cracking resistance because this fig could be as early as let's say Ronde Bordeaux, but even Ronde Bordeaux splits. And therefore I'm not as high of the of a advocate of Ronde Bordeaux for that reason. Um, because if they split, of course they could ferment, um, although Ronde Bordeaux really doesn't, which is kind of insane. But uh, it could also attract pests and critters and um, like particularly the fruit fly. Also, they don't, ha they don't do well on the shelf, on the counter. So, you know, this fig here, I don't know if it splits all that much, but it does have some cracking in the side. It has rained quite a bit. It has been quite colder here. So this is what I would imagine would happen at this time of the year to, to any of the figs. But some of them are just going to be way better than others. Like the Moro de Caneva over there is just basically indestructible to splitting, to cracking, to anything bad happening to it. Um, so this one I doubt will ever really be a great commercial choice. But again, for the experimentation of the hobbyist, this could be a good choice. Let's try it. Yeah, tastes a lot like JH Adriatic, guys. Tastes a lot like strawberries, that strawberry jam, all the different Adriatic types. Tastes pretty spot on, honestly. Tastes a bit like my Azores Dark, but more strawberry. Um, good thickness. The, um, the skin and the synconium, the, the entire outside of the fig, minus the pulp. So let's just talk about the exterior of the fig, the shell of the pulp is quite thick. Um, reminds me a lot of a Dotato. If anyone's ever had a Dotato, it has a, a very thick layer of synconium, a very thick shell to it, which gives it a good ability uh, to be a commercial fig. So in that sense, it's actually pretty good. Um, not the most palatable though. That characteristic makes it a little bit less pleasurable uh, to eat. But the pulp is so thick and jammy that it almost counteracts that in a way. It doesn't make it necessarily matter. You know, the Col de Doms and let's say Azores Dark, we just tried, um, they're really thick and jammy on the inside, but also the skin is really pleasurable to eat as well. And the synconium just meshes really well with that thick and jammy pulp. This is like eating two different things in one. You got the thickness of the, the walls there of the fig and then you also have the very thick pulp and it's almost like they go against each other in some way. Just worth mentioning, I think. But anyway, I think it's a great fig. I would say um, it's at least a four out of five, 4.5 out of five. Uh, just as good, if not better than Strawberry Verte and, and uh, you know, Battaglia Green, JH Adriatic, Green Aishia. Who really knows, unless I have them for really three to five years to be able to compare them side by side in terms of flavor. We also won't know for three to five years based off of you know what the differences are in vigor and hardiness and uh, earliness, productivity. We just have to have these trees here in the ground for a number of years, but it's doing quite well. You can tell it's really dug itself in well. Planted from a one gallon last spring um, spring of 2019. It's got long leaves on it, finger-like leaves, almost like a Brunswick or an LDA. In fact, LDA is right next to it, and you would almost never be able to tell the difference unless you had a trained eye. 
between the leaves. So quite interesting how that's just occurring. You know, there's only so many varieties with these long finger like jagged edged leaves to them. LDA, Brunswick, Stella, or Dalmatie, I should say. So quite a vigorous variety. I find most trees with these longer, bigger leaves to them actually are quite vigorous as well. And you, you could definitely ascertain that just from this year um, alone. It's really dug itself in well. In fact, the LDA next to it is about the same size. And that was planted the same year as this, but that was planted as a 10 gallon size pot. So one gallon versus a 10 gallon, we're now a whole year, um, really two years in now, and they're both about the same size. So it just kind of goes to show you, well, there could be a difference in vigor, but it just goes to show you that, you know, even if you plant a small tree in the ground, it's still gonna do really well getting itself dug in and being vigorous as the other LDA that was planted as a much larger pot. So thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll see you all soon. Hit that subscribe button. Take care guys.